Welcome back to Orlando, Florida 2018-21 convention. This is the e-ticket for the entire show. I have to confess, I have been seeing the movie trailer for this speech for the last year. Matter of fact, it's been a little over a year. Uh, this speech uh, had its origin probably about two, two and a half years ago. It is a continuation of last year's keynote speech, and it is a rolling, moving target that has incorporated all the lessons in history, cult culture, politics, and social misfit information you can imagine possible. Uh, I am terribly pleased to introduce the founder, CEO of 21 University, 21 Studios, and 21 Convention, presenting the future is still masculine, Anthony Dream Johnson. Thanks, Doc. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's dig right into it. As he said, the title of my talk this year, sequel to last year's keynote, The Future is Still Masculine. As he said, my name is Anthony Dream Johnson. Soon that will be legally true. My middle name currently is Paul. With that said, while I'm known as the dream, I have a dream. That dream is to create positive media for men and destroy feminism. Oh. Recapping on last year's keynote that was mentioned by Socrates and now myself, I opened last year's address with feminism is the ultimate hate and supremacist movement. That's the biggest image of the talk. You guys have seen the talk, probably on YouTube, things like that. Super important, and we'll dig more into this concept as we go throughout the talk. What I'm doing with that image, with that idea, and with that speech, and with this speech, is igniting a cultural revolution, a peaceful revolution, a revolution that destroys feminism and replaces it with something positive. So last year I spoke during the talk, and it was actually joint between Socrates and myself. I spoke, he spoke. He's actually a professional architect. You guys know him as a speaker of this convention on relationships, relationship management, masculinity, things of that nature. But his day job is an architect. He's one of the best. He wins awards, he gets in magazines, he's a complete badass. Surprise, right? That was his component, and this is a big unveiling that we've been working on for years. We are hosting this convention right now in hotel. We've done that for many years. We've done it in schools, conference centers, things like that. But eventually, the day will come, I think, when we are not allowed in venues like this. As of yet, we've been able to avoid that problem-free. I maintain really strong relationships with uh, venues, but I'm not counting on that. Many others have been deplatformed, from Alex Jones to Rouge V, and that's just the beginning. That's going to get worse. So we're going to avoid that as long as we can, but long-term, I am not counting on a digital or physical venue platform for this convention. We're fine now, but eventually we have to build it. We're going to build it, and it's going to be fucking badass from the ground up by Socrates, lead architect and project manager. That is in motion, and we'll dig more into that later in this talk. Continuing on a recap of last year's presentation, The Future is Masculine, we discussed that feminism is an idea virus like a cancer. It spreads and spreads and spreads, and it gets worse over time. Whatever it started as, and there's controversy and debate for that, what we see today is obscene and disgusting and gross. It's horrible. It's a hate movement against men. And it's a supremacist movement for women. It has infected everything we see in Western life, everything we value, every institution, from the governments, we, from state, federal, local government, schools, universities, uh, on and on down the line, right down to business and even the family in your home. It's all around us all the time, even right down to churches, entertainment, schools, everything. Feminism as a women's rights movement is a myth. I do not believe that's true, and if it was ever true, it hasn't been true in a long, long time, long before any of us were alive at this point, especially in this room. Feminism today is hatred of men, boys, masculinity, family, and fatherhood. It is absolutely opposed to that in every medium we see it, and it's getting more explicit, more open, and more aggressive by the day. One of the most important points of uh, slides from last year's presentation I brought into this one is the uh, debate between being anti-feminist, opposing feminism, criticizing it, ridiculing it, making fun of it, opposing it, versus being all about positive masculinity and pro-masculinity. My idea is that both are very, very important, perhaps equally important, dead on. I think either one is naive. They are, you're either ignoring an aggressive movement against men 
Are you, fo are you focusing entirely on yourself without opposing it or without realizing, without appreciating the environment and culture and context that you exist in? So even if you're all about self-improvement, you want nothing to do with opposing feminism, well, feminists don't care. The fact that you are trying to become more powerful, healthy, wealthy, have better relationships, build families, build businesses, that's a threat to feminism because they want to control you and they fucking hate you. And they don't care what you look like. Feminists do not discriminate. Well, they discriminate if you have a dick and balls. That's your, that's your crime for being born that way. Outside of that, they don't care what you look like. White, black, Asian, they don't give a shit. They hate you for the way you were born. So both are important, and this is really important to keep in mind. For many years of this convention, I did not focus enough, not nearly enough, on being opposed to feminism and appreciating the environment that this company that I was evolving in, as well as myself, maturing over time. The older I get, the more apparent this gets, and the more, the, uh, more aggressive it gets, as we've seen in the culture and we're going to discuss in this presentation. So both elements are important, and they're complementary. They work together very well, and you guys have seen that at this event. Let's discuss what feminism is a little bit. So when people bring up feminism, one of the first things they say, it's all about equality, right? Equality, equality, equality. It's very vague, very uh, poorly defined, very... Uh, feminists are almost opposed to defining it. If you try to define it, they want it, they say no. They keep this vague, kind of nebulous, uh, you know, momentum going for it. But if it's about equality, they then, they then jump right to equal rights. Well, that's different. Equality is not equal rights. Equal rights is more specific. So if feminism isn't about equality, equal rights, what about women's rights? They jump to that. Then they jump to women's empowerment. Suddenly you have this feminism is all about equality, and then it jumps into 47 different things all at once. It's a slippery slope. They do that so they can goalpost shift over time. They can keep it mutating and shifting over time so that you can't pin it down and be precise. In fact, I think Rolla Tomasi is one of my favorite speakers here. And I think one of the most important contributions he makes to the manosphere and the red pill is his precision. It's surgical. People complain, they say his essays are too long, all this bullshit. I think that's, seriously, it's bullshit. His precision is needed. Now, that doesn't mean short form content's bad. It means both are important. And the way he writes out his essays, it gets really detailed, is very important. Feminists fucking hate it. Because in precision, there is truth. And they hate truth. So feminism has never been about equality. We'll discuss that more later. But I think this quadrant of ideas they tend to jump between, it's important to keep this in mind and look at this whenever they, they bitch and complain about something. Because it's always shifting, they're always moving around. It's never this like this tightly defined thing. And that's on purpose. Feminists say that uh, women getting the vote was this major victory for equality. I think it's not. I think it was not at all. I think it was the death of equality in this country. It was a death of equality between rights and responsibilities. Women getting the vote was not the problem. It's women getting the vote in the way they did, the manner they did, that's the problem. Well, there are many thousands of feminists that were opposed to getting the vote because they thought they were going to get drafted into the military, what we, see, what we call today a selective service. They dodged that. They got out of that. I think this, is, I think this death between, of equality between rights and responsibilities is horrible. Obviously, there are racial elements that were fixed later in this country, but in terms of men and women, this is when equality died, 1920. It's horrible. We need to fix this someday. I'm not proposing a solution at this time. I'm pointing out a problem. Let's dive a little bit into the manosphere understanding of feminism. So feminists say all this different bullshit, equality, women's rights, uh, you know, uh, women's empowerment, all this stuff. I think it's more along the lines of what we see in the manosphere. We call it a system-wide shit test or congruence test, so women are, are testing us at a wide scale. We also see it as women uh, maximizing sexual freedom or indulgence for them, and then maximum sexual restraint for men. So they're flipping, it's a power reversal. In some ways, revenge and supremacism and hatred of men. I also want to make a, make a point that very few women today identify in the West as feminists, maybe 20, 30% from different studies I've seen. As big of a problem as they are and as annoying as they can be, they're not really the problem. The problem is that they get together and distribute that shit all throughout the culture to women who don't identify as feminists, the mainstream, the other 80% of the population who don't identify as that. But more than half of what they think, their core beliefs, what they actually think about and act on, on a daily basis and over time in their life, that's what we're concerned with, for them, for women, and for men. For men, we call blue pill lies. I think these are feminist lies, the blue pill. 
This is a control system for men, and it fucks men up. It gets men killed. We've talked about that at this conference. So with women today in the West, I think feminism has become basically their religion, their philosophy for life. It's no longer a, whether or not they have a particular religion they follow, Christianity, Judaism, or whatever, feminism dominates the majority of how they operate over time in their life in major ways, decisions, choices, uh, from you know, becoming a mother to schooling to career, things of that nature. Feminism is the, the dominant force in how they think, how they act over time. It's replaced God, it's replaced uh, you know, patriotism, everything like that. Every other important cons or pillar of life for them. And the infection rate is incredibly high. By far, I think most women today in the West, America, Canada, and otherwise, are infected with a shit ton of feminism. They've been brainwashed, more or less, like many men. The difference, of course, is that men have a positive counter movement. We have the manosphere, we have the pickup community, we have the red pill, and more. Women don't have that. They have feminism, and then nothing. And that's a problem. Let's talk a little bit more about feminism versus masculinity. Right now in America, the political tensions are really high. In my lifetime, I'm only 30, but I've never seen anything like what we see today. I've talked to men in their 50s and 60s who say even the same thing. They have never seen things this tense in this country, not even close. Even men who went through the, uh, Vietnam and the draft and all the sh shit going on back then, this shit's getting really serious. And the way it's displayed or portrayed by the mainstream is left versus right, Democrats versus Republicans, liberals versus conservatives. I think that's all nonsense. I think that male-female relationships are the cornerstone and bedrock of human life, not just for thousands of years, for the entire span of our species. The red pill, in particular, focuses in on that, hones in on it as truth, the, raw, uh, the very raw understanding of it. So male-female relationships precede language and fire, and I think that getting screwed up by feminism is in large part over the past 100 years is why we're seeing tensions rise so high in politics, left versus right, and the philosophies and, and groups, the parties of each one. That's not a problem as much as it is a symptom. It's a symptom of feminism fucking this country up and our allies. I mean, look, think about it this way. We've talked about uh, you know, Black Dragon, other speaker of this conference, Caleb Jones and Socrates. They talk about the sexual marketplace, the dating marketplace, and other speakers. Gender relations today have basically collapsed. What are the rules of dating? Nobody knows. It's just complete chaos at this point. You can read about it all day long, study it, try to appreciate, study the laws, you know, understand game, the red pill. You're still like, holy fuck, what do I do? No one is, in Rolo avoids, for example, being prescriptive, because it's dating today is fucking crazy. Feminism has driven that in large part. So I think what we're seeing today with the tensions, left versus right, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, that's real, but again, it's more of a symptom than a direct problem. The war we're seeing play out before our eyes is toxic femininity versus positive masculinity. And it's my belief that the future of America and Western civilization hinges on destroying feminism. America will not survive this century in the West without the feminism ending. One way or another, all these different mechanisms, birth rates, demographics, family formation, the institution of marriage itself, these things are going to die. They're not going to last if feminism lives as a movement and is a, and a, and a, and a uh, dominant force in the culture. That has to end and be minimized and put in the history books. I wanted to go through this a little here too, get more specific with uh, masculinity and feminism. So this is gonna get really specific, we're gonna hammer through it, and I think you guys are gonna get it pretty quick. So team masculinity versus team feminism. Team masculinity, we have individual rights versus women's rights, right? Group rights. We have equality of opportunity versus equality of outcome. We have patriotism versus globalism. We have the rule of law versus the rule of women. I think displayed perfectly in the recent confirmation of the Supreme Court Justice, Brett Kavanaugh. We have innocent until proven guilty versus guilty until proven innocent. We have believe the evidence versus believe women. Personal responsibility for all, evade all responsibility. Men and women are different, fuck yeah. To, to the private man. May he rest in peace, damn right. So we have men and women are different versus female supremacism, which we're gonna focus on in just a minute. We have a love of women. By the way, an attendee here nailed that, just uh, I believe it was yesterday. During a Q&A session with one of the speakers, 
he came up and said, I don't think he was 99% right, almost 100%. He said, I love women, but I hate feminism with a passion. I want to one-up that. I love women, and I hate feminism with a passion. It's not a but, it's an and. If you love women, you should hate feminism, especially the modern iteration. It is disgusting, nasty, and it destroys women, it destroys families, and it hurts men. It drives men to suicide, left and right. With masculinity, we have an objective consent standard. No means no. I grew up in the 90s, 90s, that's what I heard. That made a lot of sense. It's very obvious, and that worked really well for a long time. With team feminism, we have subjective consent standards, which we now see as enthusiastic consent. The fuck is that? That's a bunch of stuff in your head. Objective standards matter for the rule of law, and that is exactly what feminism hates, what they don't want. Team masculinity is pro-family, Team feminism is anti-family and pro-broken family. Look at the statistics on single motherhood from anyone, whether it's Rolla Tomasi writing an essay or Ann Coulter or anyone else. Single motherhood and broken families are horrible for the United States and every Western nation, any nation for that matter. Team masculinity is pro-fatherhood, pro-motherhood. Team feminism is anti-fatherhood, anti-motherhood, unless it's single motherhood, apparently. Team masculinity is pro-West, enlightenment values, the country, or the values that built the United States and all the West. Team feminism is anti-Western values. Team masculinity, teamwork and cooperation versus divide and conquer, identity politics, getting everyone amped up. Team masculinity, racism is evil. Team feminism, white men are evil. Team masculinity, boys will be boys. Team, femi team feminism, boys are defective girls. Rational patriarchy, radical matriarchy. Father knows best, kill all the men. Sarah Jiang is her name? New York Times editorial board said this on our Twitter account before, be before being hired by the New York Times, and they were fully aware of it when they hired her. She came out and said to kill all men and kill all white people too. But she then focused on the men, kill all the men. This is sick. This is extreme racism, kill all white people, and extreme sexism. And this is becoming normal. This is no longer, 20 years ago, this would have been radical. Today, that's mainstream. That's, she works at the New York Times right fucking now. They're fully aware of this. They don't care. They probably could ask her if she had any friends who wanted to work there. <laughs> Team masculinity, genocide is evil and crazy. Team feminism, reduce men to 10% of the population. There's an asterisk there, you can read that. The founder of gender studies in 1973, woman, uh, her name's Sarah, I believe. In 1973, she gave a lecture advocating to reduce men to 10% of the population. She founded gender studies, the gender studies you see today, all throughout America and our universities, which we make fun of because how fucking retarded it is. But look how sick this is. She actually said this. There's documentation of this. Reduce men to 10% of the population. That's fucking gender side. And that is what has infected American universities today. And the people get People go $50,000 in debt to learn this kind of shit, or the more modern evolution of that. Sick. This is the true face of feminism. We have Kathy Griffin up here, chopping the head off of uh, President Trump. By the way, a father and grandfather. What the fuck was she going to tell his grandkids? She didn't care. What the fuck does she care, right? Normalize violence against men. You've never seen Sean Hannity chop Hillary Clinton's head off. Even better? You'll never see Anderson Cooper chop off Sarah Palin's head. This level of violence, decapitating somebody, is normalized violence against men. You'll never see it in reverse, regardless of political parties. You have Madonna up here, right? Mainstream celebrity, has millions of fans, millions upon millions of fans, raving about violent domestic terrorism in Washington, D.C., in front of the White House, like it's fucking normal. Aji Argentio, Me Too hero, suspected fucking child molester, drove her boyfriend, Anthony Bourdain, to suicide. Then, after he died, blamed a child molestation on him. This is a meme we have uh, made up by, uh, by a buddy of mine. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everyone. This is the face... I know, right? This is the face of feminism. This is what it's become. Whatever it once was, this is what it is right fucking now. And this is getting really extreme, really fast. It gets worse. There's Sarah Jung from the New York Times, like I said earlier. This is her tweet from 2015. Anyways, my point is that we should kill all the men prior to removing the state from marriage as an institution. This is fucking crazy. She got hired. She, she, she should be permanently unemployable for saying this. 
No, they fucking hired her right away. Probably, it probably is one of the reasons she got the job. Like, oh, fuck yeah. It's fucking crazy. Christine Fair, professor at the University of Georgetown, the oldest Catholic university in the United States. Look at, she just tweeted this. She did get banned eventually for it from Twitter. I was surprised, right? Look at the chorus of entitled white men justifying a serial rapist uh, arrogated entitlement. All of them deserve miserable deaths while feminists laugh as they take their last gas. Bonus, we castrate their corpses and feed them to the swine, pigs. This woman is a, has a verified account, tens of thousands of followers, is a professor at a major university, the oldest in the United States for Catholicism, comes out and says this shit, gets retweeted dozens, hundreds, thousands of times, like it's fucking normal. This is sick. This is torture and violence. Open, right out in the open. And then you have uh, Scazio Cortez over here. Thousand cocks stare, crazed bug eyes. This is what all this shit looks like at the end of the day, or worse. And then this. This is a Mormon Christian, mother of six. Comes out recently. This got over 80,000 retweets. More retweets than a sitting U.S. president gets on an average tweet. She's advocating for castration of all men for, I quote, irresponsible ejaculations, knocking a girl up on accident. She then advocates for forced sterilizations, vasectomies for all boys who have puberty. This is a mother of six, a Christian woman. She's not some godless, like, you know, fucking weirdo, blue haired chick. Just some new, and New York Times best selling author, openly advocating for castration as punishment. Talk about cruel and fucking unusual and violent and crazy. And then forced sterilization of all men when they have puberty. This is no longer out, ex this is extreme, but it's no longer unusual. This is becoming normal. This gets retweeted 80,000 times. I think I just saw it today, it's got over 250,000 likes on Twitter. That's a shit ton for any social media platform. This is the new normal for feminism, 2018. Where do you think it'll be in 20, 2028, 2038? Where do you think this goes? You'll say, oh, this will never happen. They're pushing for it. They're talking about it. Talk leads to action. Talk precedes action. More on Justice Brett Kavanaugh. I mean, this, is, this guy, you know, Boy Scout, as far as we can tell, lived a perfect, you know, Christian Catholic life. Mr. Clean, impeccable character. Went through seven FBI background checks. Absolute witch hunt for this guy. Exactly like Justice Clarence Thomas in 1991. He was a black man in 1991 who was accused of very similar, uh, very similar circumstances by Anita Hill. He got up in 1991, being confirmed to the, US, to the Supreme Court. He said this, it was a digital lynching. It was. And now it continues. Now it doesn't even matter where your skin color is. Everybody gets lynched because you're a fucking man. It's a witch hunt. Me Too is a witch hunt, and it's a hatred. It's a uh, well, witch hunt is against men is the best way to put it. Yeah, all this bullshit about it being for women and some positive stuff and all this rape culture shit, it's complete bullshit. This is a witch hunt. Whether it's 1991 or right now, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, same shit. Sick. I mean, yeah, he got ended up being accused of being a rape, like a roaming rape gang. Like, this, or gang rape. These people are fucking crazy. But hey, we got him. Actually, let's pause here. He was just confirmed in the Supreme Court. Great. He was confirmed 50 to 48. The presumption, the presumption of innocence that feminists threw out the fucking window like that didn't even blink. That was upheld. The presumption of innocence was the innocent to proven guilty was upheld by a razor thin margin by vote. That's where this country's at politically. That's what feminism has done to men and women gender relations, as you see expressed in politics. Barely got it. Just scraped by. Shifting gears a little bit. I believe that speech is the most dangerous thing in the world. There's a reason that the United States, on our Constitution, it's the First Amendment, not the Second. This is a drawing from the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention for Women. About 300 women got together in 1848, and it led to the feminism we see today, regardless of what happened along the way. People meeting anyone, male or female, is powerful. People talking is powerful, because talking leads to action. Here's another convention that we're familiar with. This is a drawing or a painting from the signing of the Declaration of Independence. People mock, they say, people don't like this convention, mock it. They say, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to destroy feminism, feminism with your awesome tweets or some shit? No. I'm going to build events. I'm going to organize. We're going to talk. Rollo was talking about his speech. He did a great job with it. Women hate men getting together and talking in a male space. Because you know what happens? Action happens. Things happen. Things change. 
very much like it did for them in 1848. We're barely 100 people behind what they had in 1848. As this convention grows, it's going to be attacked, more so than it already is. The point here, though, is that speech is very, very powerful. Talking, 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 no. It leads to action. Never, I mean, whether it's this or, holy shit, this. One of the most epic moments in human history. Masculinity at the forefront, defeating tyranny, defeating a king, founding the greatest country ever, found, ever created. It's a masculine future is what we're creating in this convention. The West lacks right now a replacement for feminism. And we need to destroy it. Well, it has to be replaced with something. If we just destroy it and get rid of it, that doesn't solve anything. That just creates a gap. It creates a vacuum. And it ain't going to last. It will, replace, it, will be, it will be replaced by something. I believe that the manosphere, the red pill, and this convention are building that future. It's taking time. It takes years. It takes speeches. It takes conventions. It takes videos. It takes the publication of that information. But over time, that's exactly what's being built right here on this stage, right here in Orlando, Florida. I do want to take a moment here and recognize Richard Nikolai, one of our alumni speakers from last year and a couple years previous as well. The, uh, the effects of feminism. He, uh, so this is his quote, uh, modern American women have become the most overprotected, overprivileged class of organism to have ever existed on this planet. Now I say American in particular, but not just Western, because women in America enjoy a level of wealth and prosperity and physical security through the military that women have never seen in history. And I think we see that expressed on social media platforms today. You see a never-ending stream of narcissism. You see the arrogance of women screaming in public and trying to throw out and destroy innocent until proven guilty. The level of fucking arrogance this takes and ignorance, especially after the Salem witch trials in this country hundreds of years ago, just out of control. More on feminism today. Like we discussed, feminism is the ultimate hate supremacist movement. It's a hate movement for three point, against 3.8 billion men. It's a supremacist movement for women. No other movement in history has gotten, has scaled to that level. Usually it's racial or religious or political or geographic or something. This is gender, this is sex. I know we hear there's 97 genders, I don't think so, there's only two, of course. But feminism has morphed, has mutated and, and morphed and shapeshifted into that. That's sick hating the opposite sex. They always, of course, say, they'll claim anybody in the manosphere that has any controversial ideas, they say, you hate women. No, I don't. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Second of all, they're projecting their own hatred of the opposite sex. That's what they're doing every fucking time. Very few men in the manosphere, uh, just, just as like normal discourse, they don't lash out at women instantaneously, instantaneously and say, you must hate men. Maybe you should, but most men don't do that. This is a distinctly feminist thing that they do, is projection. And they even, we'll get into more here in a second, but it's supremacism. They march in the streets now. The future is female. I say the future is masculine for a reason. I don't say the future is men. I don't say the future is male. I say the future is masculine. Masculinity is a set of characteristics that guide and lead. It revolves around one half of the population, sure. But it's inclusive. We love women. Women love masculinity, too. Most of them. Going more into it. Feminism is a toxic culture war on men, masculinity, boys, fathers, and family. Toxic masculinity, of course, as Rolla pointed out, quickly became all masculinity is toxic. That narrative, toxic masculinity, lasted for, what, a year or two? Now, all masculinity is toxic. Fuck it. A little bit, a lot of it, all of it. It is the hatred of positive and conventional femininity, women who want to be women, who want to embrace motherhood, embrace being a woman. They are seen as, it's like feminism is driving women off a cliff. And any woman who's like, hey, fuck that shit, they're like, nope, I'm right back over here. Crazy. It's a rebellion against nature. It's a rebellion against the fact that men and women are different. They hate this fact. I think this is one of the cornerstones of what feminists hate and what they're war with. You could go further into like penis semi and stuff like that. Whether you go that far, I don't think it's important. This is a fact. Men and women are different. Our differences polarize us and they make us get along and cooperate and be compatible. They make the, I mean, they make, for example, with sex, they make it beautiful. We're attracted to things that we don't have. No, very few men wake up and say, oh, I want a strong, independent woman in my life. Why would we want that? We bring strength to the table. They want strength. They're attracted, attracted of course, to strong, confident men. Not the other way around. I got to drink some feminist tears. Hang on.
It's a rebellion against nature. I believe feminists and feminism in particular is a, is a toxic ideology independent of the, of the individuals involved. It's a hatred of, of nature and of masculinity. We're the placeholders of that. We're like in the moment that. So that's why they hate men as well. But really it's against nature and it's against masculinity and even themselves. I think it's a disease of civilization, psych psychologically equivalent to something like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, things that we see exploding today because of the way people choose to live. Feminism is a philosophy. It's a core set of beliefs that has infected the West, but it's psychological instead of physical. At the end of the day, though, it's very similar. A disease of civilization. Feminism is extreme and radicalizing young women. You see New York Times you know, on the new editorial board, you know, hate, you know, kill all men. You see Christian mothers of six talking about you know, open castration or castration of men for irresponsible ejaculations. You see all kinds of crazy shit they're doing, left and right. And it's getting worse every day, every month, every year. 10 years ago, it wasn't nearly as bad when I started this company, or 12 years ago. Now, it's just out of control. I also believe, and we'll talk more about this soon, that we've lost a generation of women, millennial women. Not all of them, but a lot of them, many of them. And that's the first time that's happened. You've seen feminism, you've seen that with men as well, and I think we've responded more positively. Feminism has compounded for the first time across multiple generations. Men have responded with the seduction community, which spawned into the manosphere, the red pill, and so on. Women don't have that. They got fucked over by feminism, and that's it for a lot of them. Most of them will not self-repair, in my opinion. Men are. We are responding positively in a healthy manner with the manosphere itself especially the red pill, in my personal judgment. But I have plenty of love for the pickup community as well, where I got my start, and many of you as well. I believe that we're nearing total collapse of gender relations in this country. It's severely dysfunctional, and the future of America is uncertain at this point because of this fact. For more information on feminism and how, how toxic it's become at this scale, you can see our speakers like Rolla Tomasi and Socrates, as well as Stefan Molyneux and Black Pigeon Speaks on YouTube. Both big YouTube channels with great videos on feminism, criticizing it in very rational, slowly uh, constructed ways that are easy to understand. It's a lot of information. Highly recommend looking those up in addition to our speakers. Stefan Molyneux with Feminism and Black Pigeon Speaks with Feminism as well. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the pink pussy hats, right? So we see women now marching in the streets by the millions, or my, around the world, yeah, by the millions but in America especially, right? They put on these pink pussy hats and they march around saying the future is female. The future is still female. If I got together with my buddies, instead of putting on a pink hat, I put on a white hat and had a big fucking sign that said the future is white, heads would explode. But you change the color hat to pink and you change white to female, oh, you're so brave. Oh, you're so fucking brave, so courageous. That's disgusting. That's fucking supremacism right out in the open. That has become normalized for American women today. That is crazy and disgusting and fucking nasty. They brag about being, oh, nasty women. Yeah, you're real fucking nasty, you're disgusting. That's sick shit, man. Sicker than this. Well, they're both pretty fucking horrible. But fucking, this is right now, man. This is gone. <laughs> the pink KKK, man. So you'll see me on Twitter if you guys follow me at Beach Muscles, another triggering name, right? If I don't dream, I have Beach Muscles. This is what this is. This is right now, all the time. The pink KKK. That's what feminism has become: a hate movement and supremacist movement for women. Feminism destroys women, as I discussed. We've lost a generation of women, in my opinion. These women will fail to success, successfully pair bond. They will fail at family formation. I would estimate maybe 10% are intact and avoided the worst of feminism. Another 10 to 20% will self-repair somehow. That's time sensitive. Women are, a, women are on a tight biological reproductive timeline. Men are not. The other 80% are varying degrees of severely damaged and brainwashed by feminism. I don't believe they're gonna make it out. You can be more optimistic than me about that. I'm not. Millennial women got fucked really hard on this. Gen Z is next. Gen X is not quite as bad in my opinion. So feminism took down an entire generation of women, and nearly the men too. No positive counter-movement exists right now for women. To my knowledge, there's nothing. And that's a shame. We're going to talk about this image here. 
So this is a uh, some uh, some blogger, a female blogger in the on the internet, right? The transformed wife. This went viral a few months ago. She put out an image of a young woman smiling and said that men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. This today, whether or not you like tattoos on girls is irrelevant, right? Uh, debt-free virgins that don't have a PhD in gender studies or some bullshit, without tattoos, this is rebellion today. This has become, we live in such an upside-down fucking clown world that debt-free virgins without uh, you know, a bunch of shit ton of tattoos, that's odd, that's unusual, that's hard to find. This is the rebel today. I think we need, uh, we need a positive counter-movement. We need something positive for women. Destroying feminism is the key to doing that. But in the meantime, we need something along with it as well. We need to make women great again. Now, now I'll say this too. I'll say this too. Regardless of how you voted in 2016, I don't, I don't actually care that much. Because with this stuff and with this, you need to take all politics and policy stuff, put it to the side. This is about gender relations, this is about men, this is about women, this is about femininity and masculinity. This is a good starting point. This should not be a rebel. This should be like fairly normal. The fact that this is rare is fucking weird. So let's make women great again. Shifting gears a little bit, back to 21 Studios update. Last year, Socrates and I unveiled the plans to construct 21 Studios right here in Orlando, Florida, Central Florida. That's going to be a multi-million dollar production facility, very similar to this, that enables year-round filming and year-round events. Not once a year, or twice a year, or three times a year. Every month, maybe more. We are cleaning up the legal framework of the company to take on major investors at this time. That's gotten significant progress, and Socrates and I have been talking a lot more about doing this, or progressing along this path. In 2019 and 2020, I believe we're going to start getting that funding uh, in place. And we're moving along in that direction. It's going to take time, though. This will not be built next year, not in 2020. It will be in the 2020s. So progress has been made, and we're moving in the right positive direction on that. In particular, I wanted to go over this. This is something that Rollo encouraged me to include in this talk very, very much, and I'm glad he did. 21 Studios, so basically, you know, we're bashing feminism, looking at a lot of the negatives. The future is uncertain at best in a lot of ways. Like, where is this country going to be a year from now? I don't think anybody knows with complete certainty. Nevertheless, the Manosphere has had some major positive developments over the past year. In particular, my company, 21 Studios, we've seen revenue jump over 250%, approximately. This is part of it. We've seen from 2017 to 2018, 250% revenue growth. This event itself physically has doubled. Uh, we're kicking ass, like on all cylinders. For a 12-year-old company, this kind of growth is astounding. Our subscribers on YouTube and all social media, but particularly YouTube, we, uh, we gained 63,000, lost like 14,000 or whatever. So we've gained over 50,000 subscribers in one year. Not bad. Richard Cooper and I are racing for 200,000. I think I'm going to win. Yeah. Where's he at? He's over there. But he might beat me. He's doing really good, too. So the Manosphere is seeing a lot of growth and all these things. 20 Studios were kicking ass, growing stronger than ever. We could be deleted any day, just like that. I don't think we will. We've been fine for 11 years now. Zero problems at YouTube, but we'll see. In particular as well, though, the Red Man Group. So in my talk last year, I advocated for, in the Manosphere, and particularly the Red Pill, more media, more podcasts, more blogs, more books, all, everything like that that we could produce, right? Rolla got together with me and Richard Cooper. We started the Red Man Group. This has been beyond my wildest expectations. This is like the hottest new thing in the red pill in the manosphere, and it's fucking awesome. So this exceeded what I had in mind. And there's other stuff, too. It's not just the Red Man Group. Lots of podcasts, events. Uh, you know, Hunter Drew is a really good example, too. Lots of positive developments, growth in the manosphere and the red pill. This is in large part how we win the culture war over time. We have to drown feminism in content, positive ideas, and positive media for men in particular. Women follow, men lead. We keep making men stronger, more powerful, more healthy, more game aware, more red pill aware. We can win this war. It's going to take time. That Seneca Falls Convention was in 1848. Women got the vote in 1920. Whatever shitty elements went along with that in the manner they did it took a long time. Is it going to take us this long to win the war of feminism? I don't believe so, but it'll take a long time. Media and content and ideas and overproducing that stuff as much as we can 
as fast as we can and high quality as we can is in large part how we do that. And the RevMag group is a fantastic example of that. That's seriously exceeded my expectations. I was like, holy shit, we fucking nailed this. And kudos to Rollover for thinking that shit up. Where's he over there? There he is. Fuck yeah. Some content with uh, feminism in particular, or anti-feminism. These are two books I found. This one through Rollo. The other one, maybe two. Broken, The Rise of Radical Feminism. This is a great book. Very short. We have it on sale outside after this talk. You also get it on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Really good book, very short, very powerful. Also, The Feminist Lie is another one as well, right here. Highly recommend checking this book out. Educating yourself on feminism, you know, building the knowledge up. So a lot of people say, a lot of men in the manosphere, they say that feminism is one, we're fucked, there's no way out, let it all collapse, maybe we'll fix it after all that shit. I don't believe we need to do that. I don't think you're never, you're, you're never beaten until you admit it. The fact that we're here speaking on the stage, organizing by the hundreds, we're, we're collecting millions of views across the internet. 20 minute studios, 20 minute studios does, uh, we, do, we do anywhere from one to two million views a month. We'll do over 10 million views this year easily, all of that content. So we're reaching millions of men. And the fact that we're doing that, we're having this event, that we're still free to do that, speak freely and defend our rights, is a very good sign. We are not beaten, we can win this. It's gonna take time, it'll take years and decades to undo the damage that feminism has done. But it can be done and we can win. The buck has to stop here. We're not the first generation to look at feminism and be like, hey, something's wrong with this shit. There's something really screwy going on. But regardless, feminism has existed until now. It's, it's worse than it's ever been. It has to stop. If it's not us, it's the next generation. I don't have kids yet. I don't have any sons or daughters. I do not want to see this continue and perpetuate itself into the future. Socrates said that feminism belongs in history books. I believe that as well. We have to destroy it, get rid of it. The buck has to stop here. No more passing this shit down the road and seeing what happens. Enough has been dumped on future generations. Debt, feminism, all this bullshit. It has to stop. In particular, I believe that the key to destroying feminism of a few, but probably the most important, is the red pill. Men's rights activists have been fiercely opposed to feminism for a long time, right? They criticize it. They're trying to improve rights for men, all these things, right? They have consistently failed to do that, really harshly. I sympathize with the issues, 100%, but their effectiveness is near zero. Why is that? I believe it's because they don't understand women. Now, feminism includes, you know, beta vichy males as well. So there's plenty of male feminists, probably most of which are sexual harassers and shit like that, probably legit. But this is, mostly it's women. Men's rights activists have fundamentally, they're kneecapped. They don't they don't have the teeth to take on feminism in ways that matter over time. So they consistently get very little to nothing done. The red pill is understanding women. Men's rights activists routinely reject that. And until, until they accept it, they will not take on feminism and win. They will keep failing. As, hard, as much as their cause is uh, legit, doesn't matter. I also believe this is why the red pill is such a threat. The red pill recently on Reddit, the community of men, about almost 300,000, it was quarantined basically censored, on, on the road to being banned. I believe that's because the red pill is very dangerous. Men are being educated on a conscious level to understand women. Feminists do not want this in particular. Feminists is like everything feminine, like the most toxic elements of that shit, you know, mutated in through time into a huge movement. The red pill is the antithesis to that. Much more so than the pickup community ever was, much more so than the men's rights activists in that community have ever been. And we say, too, that I, I agree that the red pill is prexology. It's the car manual to fix your car. Not why you should maintain it, not what you should buy, not why you should drive it and enjoy it. It's how to fix it. That is what the red pill is as a concept. But it's also a community, and I don't hear that talked about enough. Whether or not it was intended, the red pill is almost 300,000 men strong, plus all the auxiliary stuff around it, like 20 Minute Studios and other YouTube channels and, and movements and causes and blogs. It's a couple hundred thousand men, easily. Unintentional as it may have been, that is a political entity. That is men organizing and, and talking and swapping notes, as we call it, and thinking about their interests, thinking about their futures, short term, long term, all the way through. That is dangerous. They recognize that and they want to shut it down. They may or may not end up banning it. I think it's on the road to being banned. There's a reason for that. 
is very, very dangerous in a very healthy way for us. Fuck feminism. Samurais have failed. Millennials also are the hero generation, uh, in my opinion, and from what I've read on this. Obviously, millennials get a lot of shit, so people read that and be like, the fuck? Well, hey, you know what? This company was built by millennials, so I'm gonna shove it up your ass. <laughs> Let's also look, though, for a second at what MRAs have done. They are consistently doing things that, on a micro level, repel women, right? They compromise, they appease, they try to negotiate. Desire, desire, of course, between men and women cannot be negotiated. These are all strategies that fail at a micro and macro level with women. MRAs do this consistently, and they keep failing. The red pill, of course, does not. I think to destroy feminism, of course, first of all, no surrender, ever. We need to stop apologizing for masculinity. Stop apologizing for fucking anything when it comes to feminism. No compromise, no negotiation, no appeasement, no mercy. That does not mean anything violent. This is a peaceful, lawful cultural revolution that I want to ignite. Nevertheless, this is what it's going to take. It's going to take red pill style masculinity, old school masculinity, positive masculinity. That means aggression. That means anger. That means power. People say, people are going to watch this and be like, oh, he's just some angry white male. Regardless of the white stuff, first of all, why does what I look like matter? Go fuck yourself. Second of all, wait, I was born. Second of all, angry? Yeah, I'm real fucking angry. I'm watching my country being stolen from me. Not just America, Canada, the West, all of it. You think you're going to take my country and my future? Go fuck yourself. Angry? I'm real fucking angry. You should be too. You are justified in your anger with feminism. What is done to this country, what is done to men, what is done to women, and what is done to gender relations. It's destroyed dating and it's nearly destroyed relationships and family and marriage. Fuck feminism. And be angry. Your anger, in, tr in anger, there is truth and there is power. Do not apologize for it. In 2019, the war on feminism goes global. We're going back to Europe. I like this image. <laughs> We're going back to Europe. Feminazis have overrun Europe. Uh, per usual, the Americans and Canadians are coming. We're a bit late. It happens. We're coming, yeah, we're coming. Better late than never, right? <laughs> Feminism has, of course, infected Europe as well. We'll be going to Poland, Eastern Europe, Central Europe. We used to go to Sweden and London back in the day. We've had, uh, this will be our fourth European event coming up in 2019 in the spring. Sweden, of course, at this point is impossible. They proclaim that they're the first femi feminist government in the world. Zero chance we're going back there. Uh, you know, London, the United Kingdom is now banning uh, speakers, public speakers like Rush V. He's not a speaker of this event, but he could be. He could, if we had an event there and invited him, he literally could not go. If I tried to put on an event there, we could have half a dozen speakers and be banned from entering the country. They arrived to get shipped the fuck back immediately. So we cannot even have a third U UK convention for the 21 convention. So we have to go elsewhere. We'll be going to Poland. We'll also be doing an event, of course, in Orlando again, right here. Not this venue, but down the road. And beyond that, we'll keep expanding. More events, more content, more videos, and more speakers. So the war on feminism goes global. The culture war. Even considering it, though, being a peaceful culture war, you have to remember that a culture war is a war. How do we know that? A gender war, even. How do we know that a gender war and a culture war is a war? Well, it's in the name. Whether it's peaceful or violent, it needs to be peaceful. Regardless, a war is a war. Feminists are advocating for castration, all kinds of sick shit. We need to fight back. We need to defend ourselves. With that said, the future is still masculine. The future is masculine, and it will become hell or high water. That depends on me. That depends on you. That depends on you. That depends on our speakers. That depends on all of us. If we don't do it, it's dumped on kids in the next generation who are even less prepared to deal with them than we are. That's my speech. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. I do, I do have one more thing. I do have one more, one more comment. So this is Rollo's third book, Positive Masculinity, The Rational Male. With fighting feminism, you guys need to really amp it up. He has a fourth book coming out. 
a lot of you are probably going to buy it. That's fantastic. When, it, that book, when this fourth book comes out of this volume, of this series, you don't buy one, you buy 10. If you can, you buy 50. You pass that shit out like candy. It's very bitter candy, a little sour, but it's good for you. It's good for your friends, too. <laughs> Socrates has a book coming out. When that book comes out, you don't buy one, you buy 10, you buy 50. You seriously pass them out to your friends at your house who you think would benefit from it. Feminism, as like Rolla talked about, infected and invaded churches. Well, if you go to church and you have a few in your pocket, maybe they fall out on the way out. Accidents happen, you know? <laughs> that shit happens all the time. So be aggressive with the media, but with buying books and distributing them. If you have the funds to do it, become as powerful as you can in your life. You are the ultimate threat to the feminist establishment. Not me, not this event. You, 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 all of you guys. They hate the fact that you're improving yourself. They are opposed to it and they're threatened by it. They should be. Becoming more powerful, more healthy, more wealthy, more game aware enables you to protect yourself, protect your loved ones, and, and exert force out into the culture. Whether it's through political campaigns, politicians, to, uh, contributions, or just buying something like a bunch of books and passing them out to your friends. I've bought over 200 copies of his books in the, since I've known him. And I think I've sold thousands at this point. Who knows how many more thousands beyond that? And many other speakers as well. I don't expect you to sell thousands, but if you can buy 30, 40 of these books, pass them out to your friends all day long. Never mind the fact that these are published on Amazon. Roosh just got banned. Rolla could get banned tonight for all we fucking know. Don't, don't risk that. They're hard, these are hard to print. These are self-published. Buy as many of these as you can because you can't burn them. You can't ban them without burning them. With that said, that's my speech. I'll take questions off camera for you guys. Tonight, now, tonight, all night at the party at Socrates, all day tomorrow, and Monday if you're there as well. For everyone else, I'll answer questions maybe in the comments if they're polite on YouTube and 21U. 21U they will be, YouTube probably not. If you piss me off, I'll just ban you immediately. All right, let's give it up for Anthony Dream Johnson.